100 yards. Boxing. To show you how mathematically illiterate the world is, you got to have her come out and tell you the next round it was just round five. <laughs> she got to come out with a big sign, next round six. Gymnastics. Look at this. Even in basketball, high level mathematics. Algebra two. A quadratic function. But our brothers are riding and they don't know nothing about that when they stand on Because they don't get it. Well, they got a certain number of zeros on that picture. In martial arts, mathematics. The reason why my foot's messed up, I didn't use mathematics in my martial arts training. There's math involved in music, is that right? Black people love beats. And music with rhythm. You can't make a beat without rhythm. Brothers hit the drum. All that's mathematics. So I'm going to give you a quick... Do a better thing, but I'm going to give you a quick scenario. I'm going to give you the first beat without math, and then the second beat I'm going to give you with math. Tell me which one you like better. All right, are you all right? Here's the first one, no math. math. Terrible, is that right? Now here's the same beat with math. Are you ready? Okay, next. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. 
Now we hear the quote from Dr. Jude. They love to label uh, black boys high life, right? Once again, those are white females that can't deal with the melanin power of all black boys. Reliance. So, Dr. Najufu states that it might not be that black male children are hyperactive, it might be that the stimuli around them are not challenging enough. It ain't challenging them. It's boring, it's dead. It doesn't appear to their reality. So you've got to marry the mad world with the child's world. They got to see themselves in the mad man. Or they're going to be disinterested. Now, they did a study at Yale. They made white students watch Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers. And black students, and what do you think they found? That the black children responded better to Sesame Street. Now, we're not advocating Sesame Street. Most of us grew up on it, is that right? But we know it's got talking animals in there and a whole lot of other stuff that we may not want. But I'm not talking about making your class look like Sesame Street. I'm talking about the mold that they use. They use music, is that correct? They use action, interactivity, all that is going on. That's how the classroom has to be in math. You've got to get them out of the seat. they got to get in power. There's a big difference. If I invited you all out to a bowling class and you paid and you sat there day one and I went over the syllabus on top, you came back the second day and I had you read a book on bowling. The third day I had you do an essay on why you like bowling. Sooner or later you won't get upset. Why? Because you didn't do no bowling yet. So that's the way we make the math class. We had the boy doing a thousand examples. Child just sit there and listen to that boy and cry. They got to get up, get involved, do the math. Now, how can they do that? Oh, I don't feel like we do it too much. <laughs> and too fast. Three key barriers to learning math that we've got to look at for. Inadequate conceptualization, miscomprehended math terms, and missing puzzle pieces. What this means right there is you're talking about something, they can't see it, and they can't touch it. So let's say you're talking about uh, the football field. You don't have a picture of a football field up there. You haven't taken them to a football field. You can't assume they understand what you're talking about unless they can see it and touch it. So if you're talking about a 3D figure, you need to have some 3D figures in front of it. Y'all know about the water bottle. You holding up air. No, they need to see the water bottle. Put it on their desk. Let them touch and feel it. See the top. See the bottom. See the circumference and all that. That's the inadequate conceptualization. We know vocabulary is big time a problem, man. If you don't clear those words, give them the definition, and then let them demonstrate that they understand it, they're going to, the math terms are going to be over their head. Missing puzzle pieces mean you're trying to teach them cute uh, roots, and then we know how to multiply. So they got holes in their foundation. And in mathematics, you can not have holes in your foundation and go to the next level. So you have to be, as a teacher, as a parent, able to decipher where the hole is and plug it in. Or they'll never be able to go to the next level. Okay, so. Man, oh man. Time, time, time. All right, this is very important for all my teachers of mathematics. This learning period. Period. Most of uh, what goes on in the public schools and what goes on in some private schools, the teacher is at his top two levels. What this is, is a pyramid of retention. We know that we taught the child yesterday, fraction, how to add. Two days later, you give them a quiz, they go back and they talk to them. Has that ever happened before to anyone in here? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. All right, come on now. Put that hand in All right. So you, you were at college or whatever, took a test, and Bob made one wonder, I just went over this. Because how you got the information was wrong. Most of what goes on is lecture or some reading. Class, open up the book on page five, read about a fraction. The boring is that you want to read about a fraction. They need to see it, they need to touch it, they need to feel it. Is that right? So if you would just stay at the top and you talk it all the time, read it all the time, that's only five, ten percent retention. That's why our children are not doing well. Because most of the time the elementary teachers are not strong in their mathematical foundation. So they just go to the board and talk. How many of y'all got it? Five. How many of y'all got it this time? Six. How many of y'all got it? And those that don't get it, they just push them along. No, you got to get to the bottom where your attention is high. Discussion groups. Have them talking amongst each other about the matter. You got to do practice by doing, right? That means get up and make the matter come alive. And last but not least, get them up in front of the class and make them 
can teach others. When you teach it, you remember it better. So that pyramid is very important. Is everybody all right? Okay, now, when we have about six minutes, math has a toolbox. This is one way that you can do this. Make math come alive. You don't learn math just to pass it in the next class. You don't learn math just so you can spit out facts and regurgitate facts. We have to tell our children we learn math to what? Solve problems. And guess what the problem is with solving problems? Many of us don't like word problems. And some of us as parents, you're not helping your children. When they come home with the word problems, they don't worry about that. I ain't even going to Every profession, every profession, 
need in that family. Don't let nobody tell your children, oh, you want to go into liberal arts, you want to go into communications, you don't need manners. Because what that does is that shuts doors to them if they change their mind. But we need manners just to walk in life and solve our problems. Okay? Hotel Peace. I saw you later.